Hi there, come on in. How was your year? How was 1989 for you? Well, I tell you, if you were watching Michigan Outdoors for the past 52 weeks, you saw <laughs> almost a blur of activity. We've done so many things throughout the year that we're going to bring you a review of tonight. Blow by blow, week by week, the various fishing and hunting and shooting expeditions we went on. It's, it's going to be a fast-paced feature, and I think you're going to enjoy this 1989 in review. I think you'll also enjoy smoked fish and spinach dip. Remember that? It was a winner in our Fish and Wild Game cooking contest. All this and a lot more coming your way, so you stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's Thursday night. Time for Michigan Outdoors. About ten turns. <laughs> The bluegill quickly shakes off the tiny teardrop, but Ed Boldazar slides it away from the hole where it can't dance way back into the water. Steelhead trout like the fast current. Actually, they like to hang along the edge of it in deep runs and pockets that are just below the spillway. from the south killed the perch fishing. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's a big one. One undersized perch for our fishing party was matched by one undersized walleye for four anglers from our shanty. Oh, oh it's a small walleye. A small, small walleye. Sure enough. <laughs> Let's take the sightseeing tour that's a popular attraction at Tip Up Town, a chopper ride over the lake. Cars were on both sides of the pressure crack, and recreational vehicles, and lots of people. How do you like it? I love it. This is great. This is a party. You come up every year? Uh, last year we came up, and we came up again. So, yeah, we'd like to make it every year. Fish bite much more delicately in the winter than in the summer. If you watch carefully, you see they open their gills and suck in the bait. They don't strike it. It's sometimes hard to tell when you have a bite. They can inhale a lure and then spit it out. You never know they were there. The wind is perfect. If I stepped out into the open and raised my arms like I saw in Howard Shelley's film, would this big bull hold still or even come back to me? The caribou starts to circle, actually coming in for a closer look. 35 or 40 yards, almost out of range. My arrow was on its way. In slow motion, you can see it against the sky at the top of its arc. But watch the caribou start to run before the arrow gets there. I saw the arrow land by the caribou's back leg. That ended four and a half minutes of the highest suspense I've ever had while hunting. Got one. Holy cow. Yeah. Ah, I don't know if I... Oh, hoo, oh, oh, hoo, oh. hoo, hoo. All right. Almost. Oh, oh, oh. oh, my skunk is over. <laughs> the winner has taken a turn for the better. Oh, lordy. Our guide, I'm going to keep him nameless today. He had an excellent goose hunting record up to this point, taking shotgun hunters. And I don't know whether it's just the old Fred Trost 1989 luck or what. But on this day, he couldn't attract the geese with his decoys, flags, or calling because they just weren't around. I uh, enjoyed both dishes immensely. The, 
the curry had good spicing and good flavor. And as you hold up the potato, you can see it still had the corners on there. It was prepared with care. But I would have liked to see a little more meat in the in the soup itself. I like the meatloaf myself. I have to go with Roger. Is that right? It was good meatloaf. Nice and meaty. And Gene Leonard took the venison honors with stuffed venison loaf, a truly great recipe. And that's when I took aim on his head because we're right in a, I was hit, hunting on the edge of a massive swamp. And uh, if he got in there, he'd have been gone mm -hmm. for the rest of the year. And so I aimed for his head, and uh, I seen, man, I can't shoot him in the head. I guess. That <laughs> was the part would be a tragedy. And uh, so I dropped down to his shoulder and waited his front leg, left leg to go forward, and I shot him right through the heart. Wow. All right, all right. Get the boats quick. Oh, it was a nice walleye. Ended up weighing somewhere over eight pounds. Bob Garner's biggest yet, a big walleye where they fish than they think. This one inhaled the lure, but it could have been just as happy with a crawler harness or a jig and minnow. The secret? Being at the right place at the right time. The oldest story of all in the world of fishing. The way our habitat is developed, they have few natural predators. Uh, you can have some real problems both in their own population, devastating their habitat and causing damage to farms and fields and roads. So trapping, although the way it's regulated, trapping is not going to remove massive segments of the population. Trapping is not an easy thing to do. Um, it still helps maintain some of the controls that nature meant to be there that humans have disrupted. Uh, about any kind of fish you uh, could catch anywhere in Michigan, you catch right here. Catfish, sheephead, crappie, rock bass, smallmouth, largemouth, pike, muskie. Walleye, perch, uh, king salmon, of course, and uh, you name it, you can catch it from right here. Hunting wild turkeys in Michigan was, was just kind of a, a dream, you know? Nobody ever thought they'd be able to do it. And here we are. First place we come to. Small bird, small bird, great eater. Let the, let the guys who've never taken a big one shoot the big ones. <laughs> yeah. After five hours of unproductive fishing, he caught this one in a stretch of river where he was expecting a 15-incher. He caught three 15-inchers from this stretch last year on opening day, which all goes to prove that in fishing, there are never any guarantees. You going to take us fishing again and catch us some fish? I'd sure like to. Thanks, John. Jim and I got a little competitive as the hours wore on, but we were having a ball. Straight up. Oh, yeah. There he is. Not a real big one, though. It's a nice one. But it's a nice one. The final score, 11 walleye. Uh, the big test for us is when our, our Sichuan birds go out this spring, we will be putting radios on the birds, um, and half of them will be birds that come from the pen where the predator has been worked, and half of them will come from a pen where there has been no work with a predator. And we will be looking at differences in survival uh, between the two groups. Double. Well, should I throw back out and try for a triple? We made the trip last week. The white bass had just begun their run, and fishing was picking up. Now, this is a smaller one, but I get my money's worth. Here you go. We got him? This is this a, is a big, big one. Fish. This is a big fish here. Is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a good... That's, a, that's close to two pounds there. Oh, that's a nice one. Very good, Michael. I was beginning to doubt. That's a nice fish. Four pounds or so, that's the kind of bass that puts the frosting on an opening day. The worm tumbles through the water and disappears in an instant. A bluegill sucks in its food by opening its gills, which causes water to rush into its mouth, bringing the food with it. And if you have a worm on your hook, you can see that you can set the hook right away and that bluegill would be on its way to your stringer. If you don't set the hook, the bluegill might feel it and spit it back out. Muzzleloader's village was once more 
better than ever. Guy and Evelyn Swan coordinated this colorful part of the fair for the seventh year, bringing lots of their colonial friends to populate a living encampment of American pioneers. The pioneer campers were happy to answer questions about the lifestyles they were recreating, educational for the whole family. Holy cow! Oh my God! What a fish! All right! Holy cow! Hold that up! Whoa! Whoa! What? Man, and that was on that tiny dam. Oh, that's got to be 30 pounds. 25 anyway. Look at that. Oh my gosh! Oh, oh, I'm all done. Oh, oh boy, I can't oh, that's man, exciting. Alive. These bays are protected waters of Michigan's Saginaw Bay, but don't be bamboozled by the location. The principles you'll see here can work anywhere bass live and weed beds grow. A pork frog on a weedless hook or on a jig is as close to totally weedless as you can get. That's a nice place. Oh, he's, yeah, he's about two and a half. A little fat it is, too. Look at these. Oh, there's the big one of the... There's the... Big one. Holy cat. Say what, two minutes we've been here? Yeah, this is Miss Put It In, two minutes. There she is. Look at that. Holy cat. That, you, I think you got the winner already. Oh, my man. I think that's a keeper. <laughs> oh, look at the size of that crappie. I can't believe this. This is, this is totally incredible. No? I can't even believe that I'd catch a crappie this size on a hook. And oh. look how he's hooked. Oh, look at how big that, oh, he's a good one. Right look at how there. he's hooked in the lip. And he went for this little teeny no. larva. And I tell you, you know the amazing thing? He's hooked well. Mm -hmm. They are pretty uh, seedy looking critter. Jeez, oh, man, that's, oh, holy cow, did that scare me. Oh. Yes, they are quick. A lot of people don't quick. think, they, they think of a turtle as being slow, but you see, he's getting up on his haunches He doesn't right like now. to be pushed like this. No, and he will turn around, so you might want to be careful with it. Now she wants him to come closer. Oh, right. At times, this discipline overrides the dog's instincts, but it gives the handler better control when several ducks need to be retrieved. It doesn't take long hours, just frequent time every day working with a retriever to develop this kind of teamwork. This deer is comfortable with cover around it, but watch it bolt when it crosses the clearing. It wants to get to the other side. In the cover, it stops. They almost always do. And watch this fawn bolt when it hears the balloon. That's the problem with groups of deer. Too many eyes, ears, and noses. One move, one sound, one shift of the wind could easily blow your cover, even if you think you're totally concealed. Aside from its periodic checking, a deer that's eating is not as aware as it is when it's walking. And for bow hunters, this is a big advantage. Some use the Apache draw, which puts the arrow higher under their eye. And I learned to use three fingers under, anchoring underneath my chin, running the string right up the middle of my nose. I line up the sight pin with the string and my eye, at the same time squeezing my back to hold my bow arm straight and solid, then relax my hand to release the arrow. For you, Dan. We have a rooster. Good girl. Look, come. Look, come. Look. Good girl. Okay. Out. 
Out. Very good. What about this Indian summer that totally fouled up our bow camp? I mean, it deer hunting really took a rest for about a week there in that 70 degree weather. Did that, does that postpone the rut a little bit or? Well, the rut's not based necessarily on temperature. It's more on, on daylight. But I can tell you right now, the animals are very active and anybody driving in the north ought to be watching out for them. John's 24 power camera lens could see the spikes, but I couldn't. That's a doe. It's got tiny little spikes, dude. Little spikes? I sure don't see them. Out of nowhere, a deer I hadn't seen before tried to skirt the edge of the woods, right along that little grass swale I told you about. OJ, I'm going to, can you see it? Okay, I, I gotta shoot it, OJ. Come on in here. Look at the size of this rack. How many points? 30. 30 points. What? 30 antler points on this. A spread of 22 and a half, giving it an incredible score of 52 and a half. Mike DeRosa, you probably have many hunting tales to tell about your years in the woods. Back in the old days, how it was? Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. Folks, this deer starts his old days. 14 years old, first year hunting. Now you can see that since 1975, the herd has grown despite controlled hunting to a size the DNR feels is too large for the available food supply and too large for the good of the farmers as well as the deer herd in the Pigeon River country. Marv Smith from Bath was a lucky hunter who bagged a five by five this year. It's a trophy plus a whole freezer full of venison, a wise use of wapiti, the majestic elk that on its own would literally wear out its welcome in the Pigeon River country.